in today's video lecture I'm going to talk about immunoglobulin G or IgG antibody it is the most abundant class in serum it constitutes about 80% of the total serum immunoglobulins. The IgG molecule consists of two identical heavy chains or we call them gamma chains, heavy gamma chains and two identical light chains they are either uh, kaba or two lambda light chains there are four IgG subclasses IgG1 IgG2 IgG3 and IgG4 as can be seen here they are different in the size of the hinge region this is the hinge region this is this angle between the constant region of the heavy chain number one and the constant of the heavy chain number two so this angle it is the hinge uh, region and it allows segmental flexibility of IgG molecules so the IgG can do two functions at the same time for example it captures here an antigen or a bacteria or whatever this is the fab or the antibody fraction and the crystalloid fraction it can interact with the complement component so these four subclasses they are different in the size of this hinge region and the number of the number and position of disulfide bonds as can be seen here this is disulfide bonds connecting two heavy chains together and these are the disulfide bonds but uh, however the, the notable uh, as can be seen here this feature is very notable of IgE3 the inter chains disulfide bonds they are 11 so the constant uh, region of the heavy chains of the IgE3 they are connected by 11 disulfide bonds on the other hand IgG1 and IgG3 and IgG2 they can cross the placenta But however, uh, with regard to complement activation, IgG4 does not activate classical pathway of the complement at all. IgG3 is the most efficient in activating the classical pathway of the complement 
followed by IgG1 and the less efficient in activating the classical pathway is IgG4. Also, IgG1 and IgG3, they have receptors, as can be seen here, on the surface of the macrophages. So, this FC gamma R1 receptor is specific for IgG1, and FC gamma R3 receptor, they are specific for IgG3. So, when the IgG3 antibody, for example, captures this antigen or this bacteria, it optimizes the bacteria to the macrophage. And the macrophage gets activated and produces tumor necrosis, factor alpha, uh, other pro-inflammatory cytokines, for example, interleukin number one, and maybe nitric oxide, and chemical intermediates, they, they have the capacity, all these products, they have the capacity to kill this bacteria, and this is known as uh, opsonization, or antibody-dependent cell mediated killing or inhibition of this uh, microorganism. Also, NK cell, they have receptors. This receptor is specific for IgG3. So when the antibody capture this and it binds to this receptor, this will activate the natural killer cell and the activated natural killer cell will produce uh, perforin and transzymes that they have the capacity to kill this bacteria and this is known as antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity. Thank you very much, Professor Ahmed Polak.